uh, I would like you perhaps to mention something on uh, diseases and disease management. How should farmers go about them? Thank you, thank you, Dr. I We say that uh, number one thing for you to, to, to start this farm, uh, you have to ensure that you control the diseases and you control the entry point. You control the entry point for diseases because diseases come from outside. Uh, majority of them, they come from outside. So you have to ensure that you have the measures in place to control those diseases. That's what we call the biosecurity. So you have to ensure that diseases don't come from outside into your poultry house. So then how do you ensure that uh, you minimize or you reduce the risk of diseases in your farm? Number one, we say this is the source of chicks. Chicks is very important. You have to ensure that the chicks, you get them from a reputable supplier who, who is very keen on the diseases. So for my case, I get my chicks from Ken Chick. That's where I, I get my chicks from. Because I've said that uh, you have to ensure that you get them from the best uh, source because of diseases control. So when the chicks come, they are healthy. Now it is my responsibility now at the farm to ensure that diseases are not spreading, diseases does not come to, to my pottery. So how do I go about it? Number one, I ensure that cleaning and disinfection is done and it's done thoroughly. So I usually, uh, you'll find that after like two weeks, you'll find all these uh, openings, eh? they are covered with dust. They'll be covered with dust. So ensure that every after every two weeks, I, I put off or I brush all the dust uh, so that I release any form uh, of disease that could be building up. I ensure that that one is done. The other thing I do is ensure that uh, every week we spray uh, in the house, in the pottery house when the birds are present. And for that case, uh, my favorite, uh, my best is uh, Biosec. It's friendly, so it's very friendly spraying when the birds are inside. And the good thing with Biosec, the contact time, is only after spraying, five minutes are enough and it will have killed more than 99% of the diseases in that pottery house. So the contact time for biosec is very okay, less than five minutes. And the other thing is it kills uh, a lot of uh, disease causing uh, agents. The other thing, you have to ensure that the diseases don't enter into your house. We said you have a foot bath. For foot bath, uh, because of the organic matters, uh, presence of organic matter like uh, the rita uh, itself, the matope, that is the mud, uh, because you'll be coming in and out almost every now and then. So that water in that foot bath, then you need to have a very strong disinfectant that will not be affected by these uh, organic uh, materials. And for that case, I use Finoso. So Finoso is my uh, disinfectant of choice. It is a very heavy duty. We call it a heavy duty disinfectant because this one kills even the most... Uh, dangerous diseases that I will mention and how to go about it. So Finoso is very strong. Uh, I put it in a foot bath. So whenever I'm entering to the pottery house with the right attire, that is gumboots, I step inside that foot bath and then I wash my gumboots nicely in there. Then I enter into the pottery house. By that, I ensure that there is no disease that is entering to my, into my pottery house. The other thing is by the end of every cycle, you have to remove those birds. And during that time, there is always a build-up. The diseases build up over time. So when I finish my flock, when I dispose all my flock, before I bring in the new flock in the same house, I make sure number one thing I do is I, I clean and I wash with the finoso. Because finoso, we are saying it's a heavy duty, so it will clean everything. Something to note about finoso, uh, you cannot spray when the birds are inside. It's not friendly when the birds are inside. That's why I do at the end of the cycle, and at the foot baths because uh, you can't spray finosol the way you spray biosec inside the house when the birds are there. So I use a uh, finosol and then I, dis uh, I dilute depending on the use because I use uh, I use three ml in one liter whenever I'm doing the foot bath. So that's what I use. The other critical thing when you're talking of uh, disease control the other thing that you have to consider and have to be very conscious about is the vaccination. The reason why I say, number one, I get my checks from Kenchik is there is what we call the pre-vaccination. Pre-vaccination, this is hatchery done, uh, this is vaccination done at the hatchery level. So when I am getting the day-old chicks, they are already vaccinated against certain diseases. So I'll be left only to give boosters 
uh, during the lifetime of that bird. So some of the diseases that are very important that the farmer has to be conscious about. Number one is the malex, malex disease that is uh, vaccinated at the hatchery. So whenever I get my chicks, they're already vaccinated against uh, malex. The other disease that is very important uh, is Newcastle disease. The Newcastle disease uh, is very dangerous. It can finish your flock even within less than five days. The whole flock, it can wipe the whole flock within five days. So at the day old, the chicks are already vaccinated with the uh, Newcastle. There is another disease that is also very serious. These are viral diseases. Uh, it's called uh, Gumboro or infectious basal disease. It's also very important to vaccinate. So whenever I get these chicks, they are already vaccinated against Marex, against uh, Gumboro against Newcastle at day old. So then I have a program, you're given a program uh, from the source. So I have a program that I vaccinate other diseases at the farm. Some of these diseases that I vaccinate against, number one is Newcastle. Uh, I give Newcastle. Uh, there are various strains for these diseases. So there is Lasota, I use Lasota, I vaccinate against uh, Newcastle. Uh, Guboro, because it's already vaccinated at the hatchery, uh, this area is not a high list for Ngumboro. So rarely do I vaccinate against Ngumboro because the chick already are vaccinated against Ngumboro. So that one I'm um, sorted. Uh, the other disease that I have to vaccinate, especially the layers and the improved or the Kenyeji, is a disease called fallpox. So fallpox you have to vaccinate. Usually you vaccinate from week 7, that is when you vaccinate, is a wing, uh, wing stub. Uh, the other vaccine that I vaccinate against is against uh, full typhoid. You have to vaccinate at the same time, seven weeks, eight weeks. That is the recommended uh, time of vaccination. The other disease that I vaccinate against, uh, previously we didn't have a vaccine for that disease and uh, it really bothered us because even if you try to treat that disease, it's very stubborn. There's a disease we call infectious colizer. Infectious colizer, this is a, is a bacteria, of course, uh, infection, but it really affects the eyes of the birds. So what you'll see, the bird's eye will be inflamed, they will be swollen, one eye can be swollen or both eyes are swollen, and the birds will be very stressed, the bird will starve and even to death. So uh, infectious colizer uh, is a very notorious disease, it's very common nowadays, in fact, uh, uh, even the major companies, uh, they have recommended we vaccinate against uh, infectious colizer, even as early as five weeks. So my chicks, I'll be vaccinating them in a week's time. Uh, I'll be vaccinating them against infectious colizer. And the vaccine that I will use, uh, I've said that previously we didn't have a vaccine for, for infectious colizer. We only treated the case as they come. So the infection comes in. You treat, the, the, those who get uh, well, they get well, some will even die. And the tricky part is if they affect the rain birds, for example, the production will go down even up to around 40%. It will affect the production of those birds. The other thing is, remember, the birds are rain. Uh, that means you'll treat them. Treating them using what? Antibiotics. That means uh, you'll have to have withdrawal period for these uh, antibiotics that are using. That means it, it is a big loss to the farmer. Imagine every day I collect like 20 trays, uh, 20 trays. I'm treating the birds, so I'll withdraw the eggs for like three days. I'm treating or four days. Then I'll withdraw another like five days after treatment. So lovely, I'll do like seven days uh, or 10 days uh, withdraw period after treatment. You can imagine now the roles the farmer that will undergo. So previously we had very big challenges when treating this condition. And that's why now we are embracing vaccination against infectious colizer. So mine, I'll be vaccinating them in a week's time using uh, the vaccine that we have currently in the market. It's called Corivac. So this is a vaccine that I'll be using uh, against infectious colizer. So it has all the, the strains that are required, uh, that are necessary in this country. So we have strain A, B and C. So those are the strains that we use, uh, those cause the disease itself. So I vaccinate. Those ones I will do an intramuscular. So it's an intramuscular injection or a, or, a, or a subcutaneous. Then I inject. Then when I inject, the birds are covered. They are properly covered against infectious colizer. We have diseases that we need to control. One of them is Newcastle and another disease we call infectious bronchitis. 
uh, usually on layers it's very uh, it brings a lot of losses especially infectious bronchitis because you start seeing all manner of eggs uh, the colors will start changing the 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 shape of the eggs will start uh, changing so infectious bronchitis also is another key disease that you need to to prevent and to control uh, and by that we have uh, a vaccine uh, that is a, a combination of Newcastle and infectious bronchitis. We call it Mevac, I, ND and IB. So these vaccines control the two diseases you vaccinate. The beauty with this uh, vaccine is that you don't repeat it after every three months, after every three months like uh, you do with the live vaccines. So this vaccine you give a single injection and the birds are properly protected against Newcastle and infectious bronchitis for one good year or for 12 months. So that means if you ensure that the area is well biosecure, you need not to, to worry about uh, the, the, the diseases again because this vaccine uh, you, you are injecting to these birds, uh, you give at 0.5 ml, uh, inject uh, through the breast muscle, and then the bird is well protected against uh, that disease. So the other diseases that maybe you control against, uh, majorly, majorly those are the key diseases that we protect against. Uh, we have said Newcastle, it has infectious bronchitis. We have talked of uh, Ngumboro, or infectious bronchitis. Uh, infectious basal disease, sorry. Uh, we protect against four pox against uh, full typhoid uh, and then marex. Those are the key diseases that we protect, especially in layers and in improved kienyeji or indigenous chicken, uh, because those are the most common diseases available and those are the most serious diseases that can uh, make you lose and lose in, in big, in big because of those diseases. So ensure you do proper vaccinations uh, and then the birds will have the right immunity. Uh, uh, perhaps, Doctor, you can tell us <coughs> for, for these particular uh, vaccinations that are supposed to be done. Uh, perhaps, what is the, the regimen? Uh, uh, this age, this is the, the vaccination. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, on the route uh, for, for that particular administration of the vaccine? Okay, thank you. Uh, the vaccine, the route um, uh, depends with the disease and the type of vaccine. So we have va live vaccines. Live vaccines is the one that we give via uh, drinking water. So only the key things that you need to ensure when you are giving through drinking water, the water must be clean. So you have to use like water stabilizers to ensure that those things like uh, metals, things like chlorine uh, that will destroy the vaccine, you have to ensure that the water you are using is clean and it does not have those impurities. And I've given an example of chlorine. Because if you give a live vaccine with chlorine, then uh, it is killed. So even before you give your birds, the vaccine is not effective. The other vaccines I have mentioned, I have mentioned of uh, infectious colizer, I have mentioned of uh, Corevac, is an injection. So it's an injection, you inject every bird uh, through in, intramuscular or subcutaneously. We have also talked of uh, Mevac, IB and ND, again it's in Newcastle, an infectious bronchitis. It's also an injection, you inject the bird. Fallpox also is an injection, you inject the bird at the web, and then also you inject uh, full typhoid. So you ensure that <coughs> those are the modes of vaccinations. And that is how we do vaccines. It's like the way we vaccinate our kids. So when to give this vaccine, uh, as I said, uh, your source or the source of chicks acts as a guide. So they guide you at what stage and what vaccine to give. So for my case, I have already a vaccination program from Kenchik because that is the breed I'm using, that is the source of my chicks. So I have their vaccination that will tell me after two weeks, give this vaccine, after six weeks, give this, after seven weeks, up to the point where you dispose those birds. So the vaccination program is usually provided and you should provide, uh, you should follow that vaccination program. It is a guide. Sometimes I say, if you know your area has high uh, risk of diseases, we call them these diseases are endemic. Because this program is uh, made for the whole country. So that means uh, the diseases, uh, sometimes they don't leave books. Uh, in some areas you will find some of the diseases, they are very rampant. They are very endemic, yet you have to vaccinate. Even sometimes even you vaccinate more than even it is recommended because you know that area, uh, likelihood of getting Newcastle is very high, so you can't risk 
to say I'll follow this. Sometimes you have to tailor-made it depending with your, with your area. Yeah.